Hi, my name is Alana Heim of Prosperity Alignment. And today in this video, I wanna speak with you about the four agreements, how it pairs so beautifully with human design. In human design, we are constantly looking at the planetary positions and how they are activating specific gates that are affecting you and me, this whole world. And especially during this time of complete change and evolution that we're all experiencing. So we're on the tail end of this journey the Earth has been taking going around the splenic gates. So there's seven spleen gates, splenic gates, and this is where we tend to say that we have fear. But I like to see the courage that it really sparks within us. So we started out in the gate 18, and this is where there's such room for improvement not only from within, and that's what the earth is imploring us to do, is to go inward, to really look at ourselves, to go deeper, to heal the wounds that are there that we're still carrying from childhood. Then we moved into the gate 48, where there's such depth and wisdom that you are an aspect of source and anything you need to know is right there for you to, to dive into the well and be able to access at any point. Then we moved into the gate 57, which is the strongest intuitive gate that there is. And within intuition, this is where we begin to trust and have the courage to see the future and to prepare for it, to trust ourselves for whatever we saw. Then we moved into the gate 32 and the gate 32 is where we have such endurance. And this is a business aspect. This is an aspect where you and I, we're gonna continue to persevere and we, we will not fail. And we have such courage to keep going. Then we moved in to getting to, to experience the gate 50. The gate 50 is all about values and being able to really go into this tribal energy where we have lots of nurturing, it's, it's gonna become this newer energy that's within business and where we can let go of the old and let go of the old laws and traditions and things that are not serving us anymore. Then we moved into the gate 28. So that was just this last week. The gate 28 is where we have such tenacity we have the, the courage to be tenacious, to go after life and to truly figure out what's worth living for. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of where there's so much fear that sometimes more and more people are gonna be too afraid to actually live. They're gonna be afraid to go out in the world and do the things that they really wanna do. And I implore you and encourage you to allow the energy that we were feeling from the earth to go inward and to explore what is it that you really want from life that you're willing to go after. Because with tenacity on your side, you can have it. And now the final gate that we're exploring is the gate 48, gate 44. The gate 44 is where we do have this courage to be so alert, to see within the pattern, to go to this cellular level of being able to explore what may have happened in the past and recognizing that you have evolved, that everything is different, that you would never let yourself repeat that pattern. It's okay to let go of the past. And that's why I really wanted to speak about the four agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz and just how powerful those agreements are and how they pair so perfectly with where we are right now and letting go of the past. So the first agreement is be impeccable with your word. And impeccable means without sin. And when you are speaking to yourself, you want to make sure that your words are like medicine, that they are healing, that they are encouraging, that they are filled with love. But words can also be poison. And we don't mean to lash out at people and cause turmoil from within but words are like agreements that we form in the beginning when we were little we learned everything we were sponges with our minds and when we learn about human design and we talk so much about how we can get lost in the story the story who of who you are but really who you think you are and who you're not and sometimes the languaging the power of the word 
can really transform or it can hinder. And if you've ever been told that you were not something, you probably really held on to that belief and it has transformed you and kept you off your path of following your chart, listening to your authority and following your strategy and being the true you. So I implore you, when we are using our word, make sure that you are coming from the heart and you are filled with love and support. And the more that you are supporting yourself, the more you are reflecting that out into the world. And so even when we say unkind words to others, we're actually saying those same words to ourselves. And that's where we cause so much pain and suffering. And, and we don't need that in the world, right? This is where it's time for us to recognize it's okay to change the way things were and what wasn't working for us in this society. Now's our chance to do it again. Change how you treat you first. Be impeccable with your word. So the second agreement is, and he says, don't take things personally. I'm saying, let it go in the sense of, let go of taking things personally. Let's keep it a little more in the positive. We're surrounded by energy. And the beauty of human design is we teach and are taught everything's energy. And in human design, it's all energy. Energy is never personal. Yet we take it personally. If I'm in a really upset, pissed off mood and I lash out at you, you're probably going to react in a way that you take it personally. Here's the thing. It has nothing to do with you. So why do we always make it about ourself? And usually it's because we see the reflection and we see in what you're saying and it triggers us to have a memory to recall and react to something that happened in the past. It has nothing to do with me. The more we can let go of taking things personally, everybody's going through something. We don't know what that is, but it's just energy, right? If I'm feeling pressured because I have an undefined root, that's just energy. There's just a pressure there. I don't have to get everything done, right? Just like my undefined sacral doesn't know when enough is enough all the time. And it wants to keep pushing and going and going and going. And it's just energy and it's okay to rest. And it's okay if I had guilt from the past of being told that I wasn't working hard enough or I was too lazy as a projector. That's not my truth. That's not my word. That's not my agreement. I can let it go. And so can you. The third agreement. This is where we need to let go of making assumptions. And he says, don't make assumptions. But I'm going to say, let go of making assumptions. Because this is where misinterpretation happens all the time. If you read an article, you don't know the intention necessarily of what was being said. And we think we know, but we don't really know. And so we start forming more stories about what we think it is. If somebody comes to you and they're having a problem, we're hearing their side, but maybe we don't really understand where they're coming from. So what the, the biggest piece that we can do for each other is ask questions. And this is the beauty of the head energy <clears throat> and the gate 61 has been transiting and it's going to continue to transit for the next two years or so. And starting May 15th, you, when Uranus moves into the gate 24, we're going to get the whole 6124 channel. And we're going to get that for six months. Ask questions. Get curious. Be like the child who has such innocence and purity and good intention and just wants to understand. This is why they, they ask questions or they blurt things out. They don't know better. They don't have a filter. And often we think that it's rude to pry right? Like, oh, for the longest time, I, I, that's, that was my story. Oh, I can't pry. I, I can't ask more. I, I don't need to know. But to be truly giving and loving and come from that good intention, ask questions, be curious. If I don't understand where you're coming from, it's okay for me to ask you, what, I, what do you need? What expectations do you have? What do you need from me, right? 
it's not about being right and it's not about being wrong. It's about understanding where a person is coming from because depending on your mood, right, who knows what um, assumptions I can make. I don't know if you're having a bad day. I don't know if somebody just passed away in your life. But who am I to create the story of what I think you meant and what I think you're mad at me for, right? It has nothing to do with me. Don't take it personally, right? Be impeccable with your word. Don't take it personal. And then let go of making assumptions. So then we come to the fourth agreement. And the fourth agreement is always do your best. Here's the thing. What does that look like? What does it look like for each of us? Your best is going to be different than my best. And my best is going to look different today than it did yesterday or like three weeks ago when I was sick and laying in bed and just taking care of myself. And depending on your mood, depending on the emotions that might be stirring, depending on life, maybe when you are sick versus somebody dies, like your best is going to change every day. But as long as you are doing the best that you can by following those first three rules, living according to your strategy and your authority in human design, staying out of your head by not making assumptions, you're going to be more in the physical, in the body, which means you're more in this present moment. You're in the now. And when we're in the now, we can't get lost in the past or the future. And given we are in the gate 44 energy right now, it is very easy for our mind to want to rip us out into past memories and then make assumptions, take everything personally, and use really, really bad language against ourselves and others. And then want to take every, all of that into the future, a future that hasn't even happened, that freaks you out, and then causes you to have more and more anxiety. So doing your best. There's often times that we think others aren't doing their best. But here's the thing. We don't know what their best looks like either. Just like you don't know your best, depending on where you are in this moment, five minutes from now, a day from now, a month from now, two years from now, your best is that you are just striving to get better and better every day. That's what I want for you. That's what you should want for yourself. Because the more that you're following this, the more you're gonna recognize that, yeah, maybe your parents didn't do the best job, but who are we to judge? Who are we to say they weren't already doing their best? We don't know their state of mind. And if they are anything like people today that have way too much going on and now people are stuck at home with their kids and they still have to work it or they don't have a job or there's all this stress, right? You're not in a good state mentally. And so doing your best is just continuing to take one step forward and moving forward and using all of those higher vibrational courageous aspects of the spleen we've been covering over the last six weeks, right? Having courage to improve yourself, to share your wisdom, to trust your intuition, to endure, to be able to set your values and stick with them, what's important to you, to also be able to really thrive and be tenacious, and then to have this alertness to see what's changing in the world and how you're changing with it, or maybe you're changing the world itself and changing the patterns, and it starts from within. That's what the earth has been imploring all of us to do, is to love ourselves. Be impeccable with your word. Let go of taking things personally and making assumptions and just always do your best. Be your best, right? Like we can add that piece from human design to be. It's not always about the doing. It's about being. So honor yourself and continue to thrive. And I've had such a great time with the people I'm teaching in my Courage to Thrive program because we get to go deep in these energies. And when you get to learn about the energies, but you also get to experience them, it's very empowering. It's very much you getting to explore exactly what the universe wants you to dance in. And even though it may feel kind of chaotic, when you follow these four agreements and you stick with them, you create your own heaven on earth. And that's his intention. You can have everything that you want. Just continue to follow it. And I know it's getting darker because I thought, I'll just come out here and do this in the evening. And I want to quickly just uh, pop up and be able to, well, I don't know if it's going to work. But I wanted to show you, yeah, but it's not going to work there. Not letting me uh, 
there's the moon. The moon's out. And there's some of the background. It's beautiful night. <sighs> so take care of yourself. Stay healthy. And stay thriving and courageous and enjoying life. The life that you want to lead, right? Make those agreements with yourself. Hold yourself to those. And the more you do that and you really value yourself and love yourself, it's so much easier to then have that reflection attract more of the same from the world around you. And the more you love yourself, the more others will love you and you'll love them. And this is the compassion and the unity that we're all creating through humanity. This is part of our big shift. So many blessings and I will see you soon. Be well. Take care. Bye.